So today I would like to tell a story about how Flor and I found our purpose on the Life West Mountain on Lefter. As you see, this is a, a quite a big pile of garbage. Um, and you don't even see how much it is because it's actually lying in a valley. Yeah, crazy. So this is Floor. Floor is an art student in the Gerrit Riefstad Academy, um, finishing her course within a, a little less than a month on the textile department. Last winter, there was a, a lot of bad news coming our way about the refugee crisis in Greece. And Floor decided to act upon it. So she bought a ticket to, the I, uh, to fly to Lesbos and um, registered with the Boat Refugee Foundation, where they help with the landings on the beaches. So they provide with people with dry clothes and some food. Floor was uh, uh, volunteering for three weeks and found out that Greece is not only facing an economical crisis for already quite a long time and a humanitarian crisis, but also is Greece facing a big environmental crisis. Flora was driving around in her car and went to the different camps on the island and that's when she found out that there was a big shortage of backpacks because you have to imagine that the people come from Turkey crossing the Egan Sea and the first thing that gets thrown overboard are the bags. So people have dry clothes and there's food, but there was a big shortage of backpacks. And that's when Floor made a quick calculation. She thought material on the beaches and bags. And that's when she called me. So let me introduce myself. I'm Didi. Uh, you may be wondering why I showed this picture of a horror movie. And that's because I want to tell you something about myself. As a teenager, I always used to watch lots of horror movies. And then a friend asked me why I did this. And I said that I found it quite exciting to look at such horrific pictures. And then he said, that's really stupid. Stop that. And then I considered it. And I actually stopped watching horror movie, mo movies. And I noticed that when I went to the toilet at night, I wasn't scared for anything anymore. Like I didn't mistake my plans for scary men. So that got me thinking about inputs and outputs. If you put something in, something gets out. So last Christmas, together with a group of friends, we were at the Salvation Army in the Havenstraat where 300 refugee men uh, were sleeping at the time. And we collected some money for the Syrian chef, which is, uh, where is he? This guy, who is cooking really good food. And uh, we said, uh, we thought to collect some money so he could buy some proper kitchen stuff and make a little storage for this place because they were only eating uh, white sandwiches with cheese, which of course is really Dutch, but Syrian people like different food as well. So, uh, I'm going to write a letter. Yeah, I'm going to read the letter which I wrote to my f family and friends after this event. Dear friends and family, first of all, thank you so much. To Together we collected a great amount of money. Kamal could not believe his, uh, his eyes when he got the check out of the envelope. He was so grateful and surprised by this present. Myself, I found it quite exciting. 300 men in a prison. What could I, what can you expect? It was remarkable how when somebody is a stranger, they feel threatening. After I dared to break the ice and uh, through introducing myself, so I went to all the men in the prison. Hi, I'm Didi. Hi, I'm Didi. Uh, I saw the absurdity of the situation. With gestures and deficient English, we got to know each other. What kind people they were. One more sweet than the other. We played games. Let me check. We played games, chatted, played a football tournament, and Jill Haskett made caricatures. 
Together we made music and we had a fantastic dinner. The atmosphere had never been so good in the Havenstraat. It was an unforgettable nice day. So I was there and it got me thinking that these uh, men come from a really traumatized place and they are stuck in a prison which is quite double. And um, they have to wait for, uh, we have for days and months and years not knowing what their future will look like. And I thought if I would be in the same situation, I would get absolutely mad for the waiting. So um, that's when I decided to do something. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about myself. Uh, I'm, in a sc I'm a student in a school for wood and furniture making. I'm doing the department called creative craftsmanship, making hats, bags, and shoes. So I thought, if I want to do something, let's do something I'm enjoying myself very much. So that's when I decided to make, uh, I came up with the idea to make uh, woolen winter slippers because I always have cold feet in the winter and I thought, how nice would it be if we together with refugees could set up a small production line to make slippers. That did not happen because Flora called me on the 17th of January and she asked me whether we would, um, oh well she explained about the situation in Lesbos and she said, let's make bags. So maybe you know those moments, yeah, yeah. So maybe you know those moments in life where everything seems to fall in the right place at the right time. For me, this was such a moment. Floor came home after three weeks with 20 kilos of boat material and we started designing. Uh, we gave ourselves some restrictions and after talking for quite a while, we decided instead of making bags, which were needed on the island, we're going to make a workshop where refugees themselves could make bags. So we said, mm, we have to uh, design a workshop in which people are able, without speaking the same language, uh, to make a bag within one hour. Because we didn't have a lot of money and not a lot of time and we said we wanted to do it now, we decided not to invest in big machines because they're heavy and expensive. So we said we're going to use tools and we're going to use these tools. So. Maybe, I think you know them all, a scissor. This is a rivet gun. And this is a revolver plier. These together cost only 30 euros. This, this is very feasible. We could afford four sets of these tools. And the rivets which you use for the rivet gun are not that expensive too, so they would only cost like two euro, two euro 50 to make a backpack. The world's problems seem to be so numerous that it can be very overwhelming and paralyzing. And Flora and I decided that we wanted to focus on what we can do instead of what we can't do. So we went designing and after a few prototypes, we came with this bag. At that time, we thought it's time to go to Lesbos. So we bought our tickets and flew there. I noticed that before I went to Lesbos that I didn't imagine where I was going. So I had really no clue because I was really focused on the design process. And um, the first day in the camp, uh, I got really emotional because I didn't really prepare in that sense for this trip. And um, yeah, there were many people and it's, yeah, it's just really awkward to come from such a good place and then look at people who are sleeping on, uh, on the floor and in tents. And on the first day, these Pakistan men, they heard they were not allowed to register anymore, which means that you're not, um, that you don't get asylum. So all of a sudden, 5,000 people were stuck in Athens in the harbor, and these men were stuck on Lesbos, which is really typical for the situation because uh, people in Brussels decide 
what they what they can do or can't do who don't have an emotional connection with these people and the um, yeah the situation is very uh quickly change yeah it changes really quickly and it's very grillig i don't know what it is in english so that was day one and then we got home and prepared for the workshop these were the uh, boats uh, material that some friends of Floor co collectors, while they were also working with the Boat Refugee Foundation. And then we did our first workshop day. So we just went there with a little suitcase because we said everything has to be uh, very feasible, practical, and easy. And we had four sets of tools. And we in tools like this, so we were walking around very uh, tough. And then um, we, in we asked up front if some volunteers would help us with the workshop. So we had four tool belts, and every tool belt was brought together with a volunteer. And then up front, we would explain a bit how the bag is made. And then we asked people, refugees, if they wanted to join. So we were like, uh, do, you w do, you, do you want to make this bag? OK, come with us, come with us. That's how it goes, because people don't speak English. And um, they made bags, and it was really funny to see how different all the people were and how some were really talented with crafts and the others did not understand at all. This is Floor, with loads of Pakistani men. And we had m uh, many different reactions. People were mostly very happy that they had joined the workshop and had their bag. It was a good way of making uh, uh, having just a, a, a fun time together and some people were also very proud of what they have accomplished and the workshop facilitated a platform where it was very easy to communicate with each other without speaking the same language and to interact so we made lots of friends yeah it was a great success so after a week of workshops uh, Flora and I thought we like this and we want to do more of the same. So, oh yeah, I'm gonna show you a video. So uh, this is boat material. And, oh, this is um, the straps from the life vests. I went to Lesbos to volunteer, and yeah, I saw the, uh, the excessive amount of material that's left behind on the beaches, and I said, let's make a bag, because there's material. Um, and there's a shortage of bags. are really happy when they they make something themselves and they they feel empowered they can actually do something and they can have a have a useful uh, object or product they can carry on okay Moet ik nu weer terug naar de presentatie? Hello. Yes. Oh, We're yeah. running into a little bit of technical difficulty again. Um, and um, we are also running uh, a little bit uh, uh, 
uh, out of time for this talk. <laughs> so uh, would you mind just ask, uh, answering a, a couple of questions for us? Yeah, that's good. And um, and end the talk with uh, some questions and questions and answers. Yeah. Would that be okay with you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Come on. <laughs> yes. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? No one? Nothing? <laughs> you have one? Sorry? I was really curious to how she would end, the end this uh, talk as she was talking. Yeah, I, I, I hope we, I don't know, I hope we can make that happen technically. Is that doable? Is yeah. it fixed? Yeah, it's fixed? Okay, let's continue. Yeah, what is the, yeah. So is it on? Yes, no. Okay, so um, this was our week of workshops, and then Flor and I went back to Athens to uh, see what was going on in the harbor, and then we got a text about this movie, and that it was viewed already six million times. So Flor thought, Flor and me, we thought we were just going to have a day off in Athens and then work a little bit more, but then we got really excited um, and uh, tried to canalize all the questions that were asked and all the media that came to us and said, do you want to do interviews and stuff? So we did all the interviews and sat in um, a cafe for three days drinking coffee uh, and got really crazy trying to answer all these questions. And yes, this was how it looked like because it was a big contrast from being uh, in a refugee camp working uh, really practical with your hands to sitting behind the computer for three days just trying to answer questions. And we said, we love this work, so we're going to do this thing again. So we went home and made a, a, a schedule of how we were going to um, put up a more structural uh, workshop than only once. We, will we are call ourselves the nomad makers. And many Saturdays we are sitting behind the computer because to, organ uh, to set up an organization is quite a, a, a technical thing. So we are, instead of making bags, sitting behind the computers writing lots of emails and texts. But sometimes it's rewarding because we already got 30,000 uh, rivet sponsors and now in Amsterdam we are also doing workshop with refugees where we will upcycle more life vests into usable products and this is our plan for the summer Flor and I we're gonna go with this truck and make a mobile workshop where we can go to different camps in Europe and see what is uh, needed at a specific place we will take more tools and different tools so that we can uh, use different materials. So we're going to make a big to tour from the 1st of August. And when we come back, we're going to set up uh, a small production of the backpacks, which are going to be made by refugees in Amsterdam who will get paid for their job. So we provide them with some work. And then, very corny, but the thing that I... Um, found the m most interesting about this uh, whole process was that uh, Flora and I followed what we really love the most and that's making things and we are making them together with people and um, yeah that's it I think yes so thank you thank you so much Didi yes I'm glad you got to finish up your talk with yes. the with the techno with the technology. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we love technology up here, but sometimes it fails us. 